doesn't become a reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. This quote appropriately applies to all CA aspirants, having eyes set on the sun, the stepping stones towards achieving the dream, singing the story of the sweat, blood, and tears that go into achieving it. With this, I, Ishi Jain, along with my co-host Yash Kumar, on behalf of Wings of Fire SRCC, welcome you all to another session of Monkey Bath Seniors Kisa wherein we'll try to unravel every mystery and solve every doubt that might be boggling our minds, relating the long article ship journey that every sea aspirant has to embark on, that molds and develops us into the confident and competent CAs that we all will ultimately be. We are sure that this experience will be very beneficial for all of us and be very value additive because of our experienced guests here today. Our first guest of honor is Utkar Singh. He is the former president of Wings of Fire SRCC with excellent leadership skills. He has also done internships at NSDC and Edelweiss. He is the founder of Up to North. He is a CA finalist who cleared CPT and IPCC in his very first attempt and is currently working as an article trainee at KPMG. Our next guest of honor is Janvi Maheshwari. She is also a CA finalist currently working as an article trainee at PwC. During college, she was part of multiple reputed societies and also served as Spanner Secretary of Wings of Fire SRCC. Last, but definitely not the least, Pari Gupta. She is also a CA finalist. She secured an All India Rank 32 in CA Foundation and All India Rank in 27 in CA Inter exams. Besides her excellent academic performance, she was also the director of Wings of Fire SRCC. She is currently serving as an article trainee at EY. It's truly a pleasure to have you all amidst us. Without further ado, we'll begin with the session. Like, uh, all right, starting off. It is commonly believed that having personal connections in the big fours makes getting an articleship opportunity much easier. What advice would you give to the students who don't have such a network so that they build a fair chance for themselves. Okay, so I do think that person connections help in getting articleship in big four. Uh, besides person connections, basically networking. Uh, because I have got my articleship in EY through LinkedIn only by asking some persons to refer me. So I do think having an account on LinkedIn and having good connections is a must for the article student. So I do think, yeah, connections matters. And for a person to uh, get this, he should post his content on LinkedIn. He can share his views, his opinions. And he should be, he should try to make more and more connections with the people that are working in the audit firm. So he can ask them for the reference and get us interview slot and get selected. Yeah. Exactly, like Barry said, uh, you can use LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn for your interview. In fact, during my article ship fund, I also made some of the partners for EY and it did work for me. I did uh, got scheduled an in interview call. So being on LinkedIn, engaging on like engage, engaging on contents with people you think matter to you is very important on LinkedIn. But uh, but another thing I would like to mention is it is not always necessary to have a connection because for me, I got into KPMG through the normal road, which is the aptitude test. Give that aptitude test and you will get the interview goals. So it does matter to have a network. It is always better to have a network for, uh, for safety, but it is not obvious that you will not get article ship if you are not networked. So thank you so much for the answer. It was really insightful to know that it's not just about the connections, but also the normal route. People can definitely get into such big firms like you guys have. And also how you talked about the different ways that you can build connections using a LinkedIn account and also using the time in your internships. So thank you so much. It was very insightful. Moving ahead, do the big four firms give weightage to college grades as well as, as, well as the score that you have in CA intermediate exams while taking in the articles? Well, uh, talking about the academic, like talking about the college grades, like not everyone is pursuing the college. Like there are people who are doing correspondence, correspondence as well, apart from the regular college. 
So the basic requisite for you know getting articleship in the Big Four is that you should be cleared with your both groups of senior intermediate. So according to me, I don't feel that college grades are something that's going to have weightage on your selection for the articleship. Okay. Like, I would also say that college grades so don't matter at all. Like I've seen people getting into Big Fours who have got five to six GPAs as well. So college grades don't matter. And talking about skill intermediate school, it does matter. Like for the first impression, if you are a ranker, if you have, if you have a good score, the interview is impressed by you that you are a ranker and you would, you would surely be knowing a lot. But like intermediate scores also don't matter. That's like I'll I'll be saying that uh, talking about me because my CA intermediate score was not at all good, but it is all that matters is how you talk to the interviewer, the soft skills and everything else. Like you, you must have a good decent score, but it is not always about the C intermediate score. You can get into a big four firm even after scoring low. Yeah, like uh, this was the thing that we were assuming marks are really important, but very nuanced with the answer. So thank you so much. Like uh, our next question is between auditing and taxation, what would be the ideal recommendation as an articleship domain? Like for uh, aspirants having interest in both, if an article uh, aspirant wishes to pursue an alternative domain, what fields are available for them? Well, uh, if you talk about the domains, like mostly people go for start audit or taxation. And if you ask us to recommend something, so what I believe is that the very first thing a person applying for the same should do is self-introspection. You should know what profile you want at the end of the game, like uh, down the line of three years or even during three years, what's the profile in which you want to work on, whether it's start audit or whether it's starts. Now the question comes in how to come to this particular conclusion of what to choose. So for this, what you can do is, according to me, you can reach out to your seniors. They are the best guys available to you. What else you can uh, approach people on LinkedIn. So what you can do is you can talk to a person who is in start. You can talk to a person who is in tax. And then you can compare the profiles of both person. And then you can come to a consensus. What do you want to see yourself after, you know, three years or which is that particular field in which you want to work on. So this is something that I would recommend uh, the people to do. I would also say the same, like, I would not recommend a particular field, it's audit or tax. You can go after choosing your, like, where do you interest, interest in. And talking about what are the fields available for articleship, there, that is most, mostly statutory audit, then internal audit or risk advisory. Direct tax and indirect tax. These are the most common uh, articleship areas. There are a few more, but big four usually don't provide uh, provide in that area, like due diligence, and there are a few. So these four are the majorly articleship areas. Okay. So thank you so much for the answer. It was really nice advice to actually look into yourself, which uh, domain actually interests you the most, whether you are doing self introspection or guiding or let, getting guidance from your seniors in the end it's what you want to do so yeah thank you so much how was your experience thus far working in a big four i don't have that much experience that Utkarsh has but yeah like i'm on a global client right now so i didn't get an opportunity and in a year i'm not going to get an opportunity to go to the client place but Utkarsh actually has a, a very great experience to tell you all of you know, request Utkarsh to uh, throw light on his experience of articleship. Okay, so till now, in my three months, when you're, like, I was located a client in my first week itself. So, talking about the overall, overall experience, it was quite, quite hectic. Like, uh, my client who was in Noida, I resided in Gurgaon. So, two to three hours of traveling time, time for each side. So, you take five hours for, for a day. So my day starts at 7 and ends at 10 to 10.30 at night. So apart from work, the day becomes quite hectic because you're traveling so much, either by cab or either by metro. 
so talking about the client experience so you get to learn a lot because of your seniors but more than your seniors you get to learn from the client itself because you go to them you sit with them and ask about how is this thing done how is this thing done it doesn't matter how silly it is because the client cannot say hum aapko nahi batayenge they have to explain this be it whatever workflows you are giving be it whatever software they are using so it is a quite learning experience because you get to know each and everything about the business how is this happening and what why is this happening and at the same time if you are studying uh, studying the same thing for example if you are studying uh, financial reporting of ca finals so you get to know why is it done done according to which index so it is a quite like i'll say i enjoy working there because i know why the thing is being being done and how is it done? is it being done? so this was about the the about the client and luckily i have not been not been working on saturdays and sundays till now but people do work here and i will also have to work so i have my experience till now is like truly great i am enjoying my experience and yeah like uh, what was your expectations from these kind of big firms and like are they actually meeting your expectations Uh, an year ago i was uh, really excited about choosing statute the audit as an article field and the thing which excited me was this only that i'll get to know each and everything about business how it is done because aage ja ke sabka sapna hota hai humne kuch karna hai apne liye to uske liye we have to first of all get experience about kaise kya chal raha so this was the thing that excited me and the same thing is being happening so yes uh, the the way i had the thought of it is like that one so yeah like janvia would you like to add something yeah like if you are asking about the expectations whether the firm is meeting my expectations so till now yeah like it's a pretty chill scene or uh, till now and i'm not having that pressure as of now but yeah in the coming time definitely pressure is going to be there because that's what big four is majorly known for but it's fine like till now okay and i'm just looking forward to great opportunities in the future yeah like like totally agreed so like uh, do you believe that professional courses like cfa can be managed alongside an article ship which is looking hectic with your words uh see uh, speaking practically in the first year when you are not really studying for ca final cfa is practical like if you have cleared a cfa like it beats cfa level 1 or level 2 in the first year you can manage i have some of my friends who are preparing for level 2 and yes they are managing it perfectly Pari ma'am, would you like to add something to it? What's your okay, take? So yeah, I am also doing CFA right now. So yeah, my work pressure is very low in in the starting stage. So so that can be managed. But yeah, time management is necessary. If you are good at time management, I think it can be managed. And if you are still not able to manage, then you can defer your exams. It's up to you. You don't have to take so much pressure. But yeah, you should be good at time management. Okay, so really hard thing to know that actually people are able to manage uh, extra courses like CFA in itself along with that. Um, really appreciate the whole detailed answer. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next question. As you said that big four is the work at at the big four the work is very hectic, but it's also a huge um, conception that people have that big big fours don't really rotate the departments for its articles very frequently. So do you think that it might lead to a hampered experience in varied roles that a ca does not talking about the policy here but what the general conception here after talking to my team members is that yeah it is really tough to change your divisions from order to tax to whatever but there are possible possibilities that you can change at least after an year like before an year you are, you will not be able to change in a big uh, there are possibilities that if you have uh, you are 
working since one year, then you can probably shift to another division. But uh, the thing that you said, you lack overall exposure, I don't think so, because if you are working on an area, uh, like you get to know everything. If I'm working in audit, so I also get to know about for how are the tax, uh, tax things being done on the client. Like we do tax audits as well. We, we inquire about tax things as well. So it is not like that you don't get overall exposure and we are just on the initial phase of our experiences. So once you are, once you are a qualified chartered, then, then after three to five years, you get to uh, think that I'll have to specialize in this area. So for, for now, be it and be it any field, just focus on learning and what, uh, what you can grab the best from it. That would be my suggestion. Moving to the our next question, lastly, what are the networking opportunities available to an article in Big Four? And like, how do you think your learnings in a regular college have helped you get an edge over others in the firm? Okay, so there are actually a lot of networking opportunities in Big Four. And that's one of the major reasons why we prefer join in Big Four because in Big Four you just I mean Big Four is not just restricted to a very small area or just even I would say not just India because like I'm working on a global client so I know the networking opportunities that I have I used to see my team interacting with clients from a lot of countries like be it uh, Nigeria be it Indonesia Germany Brazil and a lot so that's one of the major in factor like that's you know that that is intriguing me a lot towards the uh, networking wala stuff and also even within the firm you have a lot of networking opportunities because for reviews you directly you know interact with the partners with the directors of the company uh, so yeah that that is something that is available in like in the big four and talking about the second question that you have asked for the regular college students so yeah this thing uh, definitely works for the people who are in the regular college because see, in a regular college, doesn't matter how many days you are going to college, one day, two days, you will be interacting with someone in the college. And be it a new phase, be it a similar phase, you're, like there are a lot of factors which uh, can be overcome by you in the regular college itself. The very basic factor is your hesitation by the stuff. You won't feel hesitant in the regular college when you are interacting with a lot of people. And that's something which already gets overcome by you when you are in the regular college, when you are in the client place or even when you are there in uh, the office. You won't be hesitant about asking any kind of question because you have already been with that within your tenure when you were there in the college. Also, uh, one more thing that I would like to add here is about the societies that help you in equipping a lot of capabilities, be it your leadership skills, be it your communication skills. So these are something which add a lot of value to you in whenever you are in the, the client base or the it office. So yeah. That's quite brief. Uh, like quite greatly summarized by John. One thing to add is that. Uh, while networking, you have a chance of networking with the client as well because there are several cases where the client ends up giving you the industrial training opportunity as well and the job opportunity as well. So if the client also sees that you are doing so, so good. So yeah, there are a lot of networking opportunities in big force and talk firms as well. And talking about the last thing, what was the question? Second question I forgot. Uh, the last part was like, how do you think your learnings in a regular college has helped you to get an edge over others in the firm? Okay, okay. So I I recall an incident which was last month only. There was a there was an, another article of uh, open uh, open learning here, the, the graduation from open learning, and uh, where he was facing issues was he was not quite well equipped with equipped with Excel. He was not uh, able to. Uh, do private tables or we lookups. So what I think the benefit to us is that we have done these things almost almost daily. While working in societies, we worked a lot on Excel. We worked on we lookups. We worked on some apps and private tables. 
so we are quite well equipped with the, these hard skills as well and apart from this uh, if uh, talking about communication confidence like we used to do speaker sessions as well so we did interact with speakers on a daily basis and we know how to communicate and how to effectively communicate so this these are the things which i think a regular regular college student has an edge over those who have not attended regular college well so this has brought us to the end of this very insightful session it was truly a humbling experience to have hosted all of you and we all thank you on behalf of things of fire as rcc for gracing us with your august presence we all wish you all the luck for your future endeavors and hope you have a great day ahead thank you so much uh, thanks for having us bye thank bye. you so much for having us team So this has brought us to the end of the first part of Monkey Bar Seniors' ke saath interview session on article shifts. Now for the second part, our first guest of honor is Harshita Madan. She is the former general secretary of Wings of Fire SRCC with excellent leadership and management skills. During college, she was part of multiple reputed college societies and also did an internship at Nestle. She is a CA finalist who cleared her CA foundation with All India Rank 24 and intermediate with All India Rank 35. and is currently working as an article trainee at Deloitte. Our next guest of honor is Jyotika Prasad. She is the former general secretary of Wings of Fire SRCC and a CA finalist who completed her foundation and intermediate in her very first attempt and is currently completing her article shift from Grant Thornton. So without further ado let's start with the first question. Does it matter if you give both groups together or each group one by one when your extracurriculars are fair enough for big firms while selecting articles so it doesn't matter whether you give one group at a time or both groups together like even uh, the people who have given one group at a time have secured articles to that big four firms so it doesn't matter how you uh, give your groups just you have to clear it in one group one line you have to pass yeah uh, but additionally i would like to point out for tax so in tax as you would know the seats like the vacancies are less so uh, obviously both groups students would be given much preference over those who have given like single single group and uh, they not to men- uh, like not to exclude anyone who has given single group if they perform very well in their interview like in terms of their technical knowledge they are very sound and they you know genuinely portray that they have a good interest in the uh, taxation then definitely uh, single group people uh, are also a part of my t- uh, like in my team as well there are articles who have done uh, single groups and are there so in that way there is no bar Okay, so what I could gather was it does not really make much of a difference if you give both groups at one time or single group one by one. But for some areas of preference like tax, it could make a little bit of a difference, which can be covered by performing excellent in twenty three. So thank you for the answer. Moving on to the next question: Between auditing and taxation, what would be the ideal recommendation as an article domain for aspirants having interest in both these fields? And if an aspirant wishes to pursue an alternative domain, what fees are available to them okay so talking uh, from my perspective like from taxation if you want uh, if a, a person is confused as to which the person should choose between audit and tax so we can you know differentiate it in terms of what work has to be done in both the Uh, domains so in taxation the work basically involves the compliance part which is basically uh, about filing you know tds uh, itrs and tds work and advanced tax work then there would be you know a lot of reading of case laws and other documents you have to be regularly updated with the new ta- taxation provisions so it the tax domain would involve a lot of reading so uh, if you are you know 
say you have that capability to you know sit and read uh, long long documents then only you should prefer the taxation domain and then uh, the third part of taxation involves litigation so it involves filing of, and drafting of various applications so if uh, if you think that you you are that type of person who can read a lot and is able to you know have a good writing capability in order to write good and draft applications and documents then taxation is the field uh, one more thing like in taxation as compared to audit there is you know a regularity in terms of you have to go to office only uh, in most of the days uh, you have to go to office and some days you have to go to the tax office as well so that is a major point of difference from in terms of uh, in audit as to say you have to go to the client place most of all so if you are you know a travel kind of person and you are ready to travel uh, to lots of different places then i think think uh, that audit should be your field if jyotika wants to add further like if you have interest in both the fields then uh, in my opinion you should uh, choose audit because it gives a holistic experience or uh, and exposure regarding all the fields of the audit system so that's why audit if you have ex- uh, interest in both but if you have interest in taxation go for taxation only right um so i think we all can really appreciate the detailed and the nuanced answer so really much thanks for that uh, moving on to our next question what is the general pattern of an article ch- interview is it very heavy academically or general hr questions also make frequent appearances so like there are uh, multiple rounds in the uh, interview process for big firms so if uh, there is a technical round then there is the hr round so both uh, question type of questions appear uh, in the interview process so prepare for both right and technically you should be sound like uh, with all the as accounting standards and uh, standards of auditing so mainly uh, technical questions will be there but also in addition to that uh, hr questions will be there too yeah if i should have one start yeah in taxation you should be aware of like the entire inter syllabus of direct taxation and the recent budget and the recent you know updations in the direct tax you must be through with it so the questions could be on that on the technical aspect plus on hr also like in the partner round if you go then mostly the questions are of hr nature because you have passed the technical round so they know that you are you know having passed the technical round you have the technical knowledge so in partner round they basically ask you the hr and, and the test you on your soft skills with a little bit of technical questions also like uh, within the few minutes we got a lot of exposure about these hr questions and the interviews so like moving on to next question do extracurriculars like competitions and pors help make a better impression on the candidate and secondly what weightage would you give to a sri tag you all carry yeah so definitely extracurriculars make uh, you know a lot of difference as compared to the one who has done just who has just passed the intermediate and not done any other extracurricular activities and especially talk uh, talking about srcc so yeah it, as a regular college and being one of uh, like the top colleges of commerce so we do get you know the first impression that as to say is the one that we get from uh, in the interviews and that could be the advantage so in the interviews the thing that matters most is your communication skills and how at that time you are able to answer all the technical questions so in that aspect uh, the fo- uh, first impression is the thing that srcc gets you post that it is your capability and your skills in the interview that you portray decides as to whether you get in the call or not Yes. Uh, in addition to that, even the tag of Wings of Fire has uh, helped us in the interview questions. And during the process, we are asked about how we uh, help the other uh, students of our community through Wings of Fire and what work we did. So yeah, even the tag of Wings of Fire, and in addition to that, of obviously SRCC, uh, some how helps us in the. process 
and you should be very well thorough with the extra curriculars that you have done like they will ask you questions from that as well and they would easily pick up if you have you know picked up something or that or not they uh, they very well get to know they take interview so uh, from so many years they get to know as to who is lying and who has actually done some work and you know contributed something and learned something from that so whatever you add in your cv just go through it and uh, be thorough with it right what work you have actually done and not fake it i must say that is a great tip and all in all um, it, what matters is the different factors that you can use to stand out in the crowd whether it is your co curriculars or pors or even the sri tag um, so thank you for that uh, moving on to the next question right uh, widening our horizon a bit more if you are given a chance to go back in time what changes would you like to make in your interprep which you felt were important for your artistship okay so if you would ask me then i would say like i was also confused uh, that which after clearing my intermediate exam like is to which domain should i go for auditing should i go for taxation so i think one thing i should have done differently was that while studying the intermediate exams i should have looked upon as to how uh, is there any uh, is uh, i am genuinely interested in this domain or not and think from the practical point of view that whether i would be you know interested in this and doing this for the next uh, uh, next 3 years in during my article chip or not so that is the thing you know applying that is to say applying practical uh, thinking as to in the practical aspect as to how these th- uh, these subjects whether it be auditing or taxation or you know accounts also uh, would be applied in the corporates and in the article chip forms so if i were given a chance to go back in time so i would uh, in addition to the studies part the late night part that you have to travel or uh, stay late at night in offices so uh, the thing is that we have to make a schedule in such a way that it helps us to maintain our uh, physical and mental health also and uh, even study also so uh, working overnight or studying overnight would definitely have worked in favor in during the article chip time Yeah. maintaining a routine and uh, maintaining a personal and professional life balance so that is very important as well uh thank you so much ma'am for the such detailed answer and like uh, ma'am one last piece of advice would you like to give all the ca aspirants out there who are currently preparing for article chip yeah i think that uh, if you are working uh, preparing for your article chip then one uh, you should definitely be believe in yourself and have confidence that yes you will be able to get through and you know don't be don't compare yourself to someone your your journey is different like if don't compare that you, uh, someone else has given both groups you have given single group so in any way you would be considered less you should you know work with what you have in your hands and you should prepare thoroughly for your interviews and be confident and answer all the questions uh, that are asked in in such a manner that you are able to portray that you have a genuine interest in joining and uh, yeah that's it from so that's given all the advices that could be have been given so in addition to that just be yourself and whatever you get just be happy in uh, that area only and just give your best in whatever you get um so maybe adding on to this advice um i see that a lot of people especially in college find uh, have a hard time in actually uh, preventing those comparisons and being themselves so what advice would you give in this domain about actually being yourself and not being afraid to put yourself out there and yeah just stop comparing i think that uh, ultim- uh, like if you are in a college so first thing you are much ahead of those who are doing it from correspondence so you should not you know you you should feel that you have done so much uh, hard work in these 3 years with managing college with your uh, you know 
see intermediate exams and now uh, if you are if, if you are in such a position that you feel that you have done some less extracurricular activities and you feel that you are not confident then try and work upon it you have so many days you should try practicing in front of the mirror or anything like you should you know have uh, try to improve your communication skills and in interview it generally happens that there are some questions that you know you don't know the answer of so in that in that uh, very moment you have to uh, uh, you know make up something and you give present it to the interviews uh, interviewers so that they uh, they also you know put those questions in order to assess whether you are able to assess uh, whether you are able to handle those pressure situations like in re, uh, corporate or in the article ship forms you would have some situations when you would not be able to uh, uh, judge or you know calculate the answers of in that situation you have to assess that uh, i would uh, come uh, you could say that yes i uh, currently i am not having the answer of it and then definitely search upon it and get back to uh, uh, get back to you so in that sense you have to put in your extra effort if you think that you are not uh, confident and uh, till the time your interview comes i am sure that you would at least be uh, a level up than than you are today so in that sense so like uh, in the conclusion we can say we have different backgrounds and we have different destinies so we should embrace that gracefully and just go on the way so like one last question like specifically from harshita ma'am like since you are a rank holder that to both in intermediate and foundation so like how did it help you to set apart from the rest of the crowd yeah definitely like i think that uh, in the taxation domain one uh, as i mentioned the seats are very less so the ranks definitely you know help me get in the taxation domain and uh get to choose the uh, like i also had the option of audit uh, i got into other big fours in the audit profile so i had the option to choose so i think in that sense the rank helped me yeah. um so maybe carrying on with the uh, part of big article should in big fours um what is your take on people who try to do some other courses like cfa along with managing an article should with the big fours is it possible do people should try for this should have an answer yes yeah uh, i think personally for me i think uh, managing it uh, is a very well difficult task because you have to say uh, do late nights also in article ship and additionally you have your ca final studies ahead of you which you have to manage alongside anyways so doing an additional course like cfa is an added uh, you know added uh, responsibility or well, added duty on your head so if you think that you would be able to manage it then you should go for it and uh, but you have to prepare yourself that you won't have any you know social life and all you have to uh, you know sacrifice your sleep and your social life and all in that sense i have seen many people who are able to manage and even uh, pass ca final and cfa in the first attempt so in that sense yes it is possible as everyone has done you have to look from your uh, standpoint as to you will you be a, you, uh, able to manage and you have the capability of doing it or not jyotika ma'am would you like to add something to it right if you want to like make a plan beforehand because it will take a lot of like your efforts sacrifices and hard work to get to that point of passing both the ca final and cfa exam so uh, make a plan before and like we all know planning is how planning important is so yeah planning and management of time and your resources should be your priority if you are going for both cfa and ca final Okay so i think that the session was a great success and it was absolutely a pleasure and an honor for wings of fire srcc to have hosted both of you today for this session and we are gre- deeply grateful to you for sparing some time um and giving us these nuggets of wisdom it was really great having you hope you have a nice day ahead thank you so much thank you thank you for having us